is that time again. Let's talk about Palette Master Element 1.3.16. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Similar to all of my previous Palette Master Element video, the disclaimer still stand. If your current version works, there is no need to upgrade. Even though you may get a pop-up dialog saying, hey, a new version is available, it's always perfectly fine to click on no, especially if your current version calibrate your SW display without any issues. Now, that being said, I will put a link to 1.3.15 for both Mac and PC down in the description below this video. My recommendation is for you to download this version and save it as an archive because recently BenQ have gone into their server and removed all the previous Palette Master Element version. Whether you think you're going to need this or not, I would probably have a backup copy just in case. Now, the other thing that I would also recommend if you have a tendency to cross-platform between Mac PC or PC to Mac is to download both the Mac and PC version for archiving. This way you have it should a future upgrade version not work out, or if you want to play with 1.3.16, this would be a great backup plan for you to have. Now, with that said, let's talk about what's new in 1.3.16. Well, now we have support for dual SW displays that's linked up to the system, so you no longer have to unplug the USB cable, or worse yet, if you're using a USB Type-C, you don't have to disconnect that display entirely for this to work. I have tested this feature out on the Mac side. Everything works perfectly fine. I'm sure that everything works fine on the PC side too. I haven't actually gone that far yet. And with all of my testing, I genuinely try to test as much as I can, but the number of devices that are support, for example, the calibrator device, the display that are out there, the versions of the operating system, it just becomes a little bit too much. So I tend to do what they call like a generational test. So there are certain models and there are certain key devices and key operating system that I would do tests on. And this is generally how I test these things. Now, if you run into an issue, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Tell me the display you have, the OS that you're running into the issues with. And you know, I'll be more than happy to try to help solve the problem as best as I can. With that said, this also adds official support for Mac OS 12 Monterey that is still in beta right now and also Windows 11. A quick hint here is that 1.3.15 still runs in Windows 11 just fine. So you may be just perfectly fine sticking to 1.3.15 for the time being. And there are some bug fixes. I put in a question mark there because certain bugs that I found in the previous version, at least on the Mac side, hasn't been fixed yet. So that's why I put the question mark there. All right. One of the things that I have to go back and emphasize again, if any of you guys have the SW2700PT, it is a fantastic display. However, with that display, because it's such a long running product line, there are so many different firmware versions. You can see on the screen right now, the different firmware dates for the SW2700PT. So you may want to identify which one you have. If you have the first generation firmware. That is the manufacture date from 2015 to 2018 August. You may want to just stick with 1.3.15 because that display, you can only go in and calibrate using panel native and on 0.16, it doesn't work on any Windows computer and also any Mac computer for the time being. So just stick with 0.15 for the time being. For the other two firmware version, what I can tell so far is that they work. I don't have first-hand account of this because I don't have those two additional firmware versions in my studio, the display with those firmware to run the test. But from what I've been hearing so far and from BenQ testing, they have verified this to work. But if you find it differently, just let me know. I would love to hear about it. All right, that being said, now we need to talk about the various Palette Master Element version. If you watch my 1.3.15 video, I have this long list going back to 1.3.8. Well, we're not going to do that. The reason why is because 1.3.15, this previous version, has been super stable, and I'm just going to reference that as the primary version. So as we can see here, 0.16 has a problem calibrating SW2700PT with the oldest firmware or the original firmware. For the other two, the firmware 2 and firmware 3, I was able to have a conversation with different people and they say that it works, but I'm not able to verify this myself, as I mentioned before. But you should be okay. As long as you can go in and choose any other RGB primary other than panel native, you should be perfectly fine with 0.16. 0.16 will also do calibration on all the other 
SW display as well, so you shouldn't have any problems there. And it also has M1 support, which is great. And regarding stability, I want to kind of talk a little bit more about this because here are some of my findings. For example, on the Mac side, in Catalina, 10.15.7, Big Sur, 11.6, Monterey, 12.0.1 beta, and it's still in beta as of now, as of this filming. It works on all the SW displays beside the SW2700 PT running on the first firmware. I already mentioned this. And if you want to know the SW2700PT firmware you have, just look at the regulation tag on the back of the display. There should be a line saying MFT date. That is the date that your display was manufactured and it will fall into the chart that I share with you in the earlier slide. So you might want to go back and just check that. Now, what I also found out is that on the Mac side, SW271C, that is their latest 27 inch 4K display. The Delta E is slightly higher in 0.16 and 0.15, so you may want to stick with 0.15 for the time being if you have this latest SW display model. And lastly, when I was testing this on Monterey 12.0.1 on a few of the computer systems, they run perfectly fine. On a few of the others, I run into an issue where if I'm trying to click on continue at the calibration screen. Well, I can't because the program locks up for some reason and that just pretty much prevents me from doing any display calibration for that matter. So just something to keep in mind. But I think that once Monterey come out of beta, it will probably be more stable too with Palette Master Element. So we shall see. I'll definitely be running some tests on those too. As far as PC side goes, well, it's pretty much very similar story to the Macintosh system, although the behavior is a little bit different. So on the Mac side, you can certainly go in and try to calibrate the SW2700 PT first firmware. It will go through, but you're going to get these weird colors because it's not writing to the LUT properly on the display. On the PC side of things, well, when you start the calibration, it will go through and then suddenly the program would just quit. This is something I find consistently happening on Windows 10, Windows 11 PC that I've been doing tests on. So again, something to keep in mind there. And lastly, on the SW271C, the Delta E is also slightly higher than 0.15 that it may just be best to stick with 0.15 because 0.15 also still runs on Windows 11. So for this, we're also going to talk about the black point and the profile type recommendation. So in 1.3.16, I found out that if you use the profile type 16 bit LUT, you still have this LUT bug that's happening where the display will go slightly brighter or darker because there's some bug that's happening with the 16-bit LUT. Now, I also want to be clear that because you're choosing matrix for display profiling here, that just has to do with the profile type that's being created. It has nothing to do with accessing the 14 or 16-bit 3D LUT that's inside the display. The program will always access and do the adjustment there. This has to do with just the way how the ICC or ICM profile is being created. So it's not really two of the same things at all and you don't have to really worry. There's no real downside to choosing matrix versus 16-bit LUT. So for Mac side, I would just stick with matrix as the profile type. That's going to be the safest and then use 0.3 nits for all the calibration devices. If you have a Spider 5, my recommendation is use 0.5 nits because the black tone tends to scale a lot better. And that is for the black point recommendation. On Windows 10, well, profile type bug, there's not that I've, nothing that I found, so that's good. So pretty much on Windows 10, if you want to use 16-bit LUT, you can just remember to set the profile ICC version 2, version 2, and not 4. Remember that. And then if you really want to go the safe route, Matrix is still kind of like the safe route to choose, but 16-bit LUT will work perfectly fine. And the black point recommendation is still the same on the PC and on the Mac side. Any other device that you may own, 0.3 nits. If you have a Spider 5, use 0.5 nits for the black point. And here are the calibration safe setting for both Mac and PC. Well, on the Mac side, the recommendation is still the same for the best setting. Use Pano Native. This is a slightly enlarged Adobe RGB and you're going to get the most out of your display if you set this to Pano Native. I also made a video about this. I'll put a link to it up here and in the description below. You should check that out. Black point, 0.3 nits and matrix as the profile type. Obviously, the gamma, you're going to set this at 2.2 default and the white point is going to be D65, so we're not going to worry too much about that. If you want to play it even safer than the best setting, well, you can always use Adobe RGB. That is the default, and that will tend to pass, even if other modes may not be passing properly on the Delta E one. And if you do color grading and you want to get the best setting for color grading, I have it there listed as DaVinci Resolve. 
but this is something that will work throughout any color grading. So if you do post-production work, this would be the setting you want to use, Rec. 709, Gamma set at 2.4, Black Point 0 0.3 nits, and also set this to Matrix. Again, with all these 0.3 nits Black Point recommendation, if you have a Spider 5 device, set it to 0.5 nits. Same thing, it's going to happen on the PC side, change the ICC profile version to 2. Pano native, it's going to be the best setting, 16-bit LUT and 0.3 nits. Safe setting, it's changing that to Adobe RGB, and if you do any type of post-production, Rex 09, Gamma 2.4, 0.3 nits, and 16-bit LUT will give you perfectly great result for post-production workflow. So, a couple of things to note about this is I recommend using Pano Native, but if you want to use another RGB primary, you can certainly substitute these in. All of these suggestions that I'm recommending, they are just recommendation. So you can change this into whatever setting you want to use, but if you want to get the most out of your SW display, Pano Native is going to be the best setting there. And lastly, here are some of the recommendations. So 1.3.15 works in Windows 11. I have tested this on my upgraded Windows 11 machine. So I upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It has been functioning. It has been working to calibrate SW display. I haven't tested this on a clean installation for Windows 11 yet. So your mileage may vary on this one, but I would give 1.3.15 a try first because I feel like this is the more stable version for you to be using at this point in time. If you're running on macOS 12 Monterey, you should upgrade to 1.3.16 with the caveat being that if you have the SMU 2700PT first firmware version, there's not a lot of room for maneuver there. So there's just something to think about. You're probably best with 0.15, but even with 0.15, you can't run the calibration on that display. So you might have to go back to the other previous operating system to get that working. I would recommend downloading in the description below using the link there, 1.3.15 for archiving and safekeeping just to, so that you have it. If you don't need to upgrade Palette Master Element, don't upgrade. There's really not a lot of big feature releases and upgrade or really any major bug fix that warrants this type of upgrade right now. I would just stick with the current version. And like I said here, 1.3.15 is still probably one of the best stable versions that BenQ has released to date. So I would probably just stick with that version for the time being. I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or any feedback about your calibration process, whether it passed or failed, just let me know in the comments below. I like to hear about them. Give this video a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And until next time, in Art We Trust.